Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. So here we are again once more. Now we should try to aim to finish the turn tonight. Uh, it's not essential. We, of course, do have a little bit more time. Uh, but we'll try and get the turn done tonight, I think. Shouldn't be too long, really. Shouldn't take us too long. Now, I did have these forces in the last part of the stream, I would say. Uh, I did actually have them tasked to head to Chichi GMR, but I think what I'm going to do instead is... Um, well, judge the nature of the fact we're travelling out here, and obviously we do need to be down on the Marsh Islands fairly quickly. It may be more prudent to have them meet at Saipan, and then go from Saipan over to the Marsh Islands. Though... Hmm, hard to say, we could always meet up at, the, at Marcus Island. It's hard to say, really. I suppose the question is, um, are we going to be facing threats out this far in the Pacific? And, uh, well, can we afford the time wasted? I suppose we can, it's not an urgency. We do have fuel in the actual sector, so it's not too bad. I suppose it's a lot quicker to do it this way, so yeah, we'll have them continue to head on to Chichijima. Hello there, Anna, how are you doing there, my friend? Yeah, they'll continue on to Chichijima. Link up. Form up. Hello there, Lander. How you doing, my friend? Okay. So, this is Task Force 444. What we're going to do then is change the mission type here to transport. And the reason for that is everything can basically join a transport. So, what we're going to do then is tell them to merge. I mean, these guys will meet up next turn, which is fantastic. Which does make me wonder. Um, no. Yeah, they'll merge. I was thinking, do we have them set out to meet, but obviously we'll delay this and waste a little bit more fuel. It's only going to be two days. Uh, so what we can do here then is we'll have them meet up with Task Force 444. Uh, have them merge. Yeah, so there should be there. Uh, two days. So one day will be about here. Then what we can do is actually have Task Force 444 actually head out and meet 439 or see which one actually is going to take the longest. Hello there, Gabriel. How you doing, my friend? Yeah, so we'll have them all meet up at uh, Chichijima, which is going to be quite good. So we have a board here. Our uh, Euler, 8,000 units of fuel. In this task force, we have 25,600 units of fuel. And uh, then an additional... Yeah. As a whole lot of fuel, 23,000 units of fuel. Uh, so in effect, yeah, this is over 40,000 units of fuel, probably about 50,000 units of fuel. Uh, so it's not a bad idea to make sure that they are protected, really, isn't it? So we'll go with that. Now I am low on supply at Chichijima. Uh, what is the actual supply consumption here? Uh, we'll go to troops. Right, okay. Now, I do believe I should have some aircraft, yep. Uh, we do have a Yokosuka. Uh, they're currently running naval search operations. What else do we have? I do have some G4M1s over here. Uh, currently on naval attack training. Your range is more than sufficient to reach Chichijima. What can you actually carry? It might, um, hmm... What's your range? 21. We could use these guys on. Yeah, we'll use the uh, G4M1s over here. So let's take a look at their naval search. Isn't exactly amazing. That's for damn sure. Let's take a look. Uh, compared to the H6Ks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's not much in between that, is there? It's had this massive, massive gap. And, of course, we do have some very good pilots here. These guys are obviously experts in their field of naval search. Uh, these guys are going to take some time to catch up on that one. That's for damn sure. Okay. Hmm. Um, let's take a look at the G4M1s, then. What is their cargo capacity? Load is not that bad. It's not obviously as good as uh, the H6Ks, uh, but it's not bad. So what I'm going to do is actually tell them to transport supplies for the time being. Yep, indeed. And we'll have them transfer some supplies to Chichijima. Uh, over here... I do believe this is where we would have... Right. We do produce actual... Hmm. Okay. 
it would probably be safer to send a ship out there. But then again, we aren't going to be transporting too much, are we? So we'll transfer a few supplies over to the base. It's not going to cost us too much. Uh, at least then Chichijima will have some supplies. Once uh, Chichijima has been served by supplies, we'll tell them to stop. I do want to build this island up to a degree, actually. Now, we do have the Chichijima special base force here. How many engineers do we have here? 12... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it does come with aviation support and naval support. A decent naval support, definitely. Not much in the way of aviation support, but enough to really look after at least some float planes. So that's very interesting. We do need to make use of Chichijima. Uh, we need to ideally base float planes or just search planes on Chichijima, Marcus Island, Wake Island. Really what we need to do is establish like a solid defense perimeter around here. Now, I currently do have a few squadrons of G4M1s over here. That's for damn certain. Right. We need you to make it down here. I need you a new mayor, don't I? Indeed. What else do we have here in Takao? So we'll take a look at headquarter units. So I do have the 11th Air Fleet and the 23rd Air Flotilla. 3rd Fleet. Yeah, these are both air headquarters. So we have three air headquarters over here. Uh, so what we could do then is actually look at transporting the 23rd Air Flotilla uh, to Babel Dwarb in later days. That may well be quite good. We might see if we can actually do it right now, to be fair. Let's see what we have available. Because it would be good to have another air headquarters sent down here to Babal, well, Babal Dwarf. It would mean that we'd have torpedo capability over here at the Marsh Islands, and then eventually down here at Numea. Numea being the most important one, we're going to need torpedoes really in this general area. Uh, bombs are okay, but torpedoes are obviously far, far deadlier. The thing is, you get hit by a torpedo, you bloody well know about it. Bombs are dangerous, but not too bad. Uh, no sound? That, um, I don't know about that one. I'm not seeing any issues on my end. I'm seeing my sound here, as well as desktop audio. Uh, can everybody just confirm that there is sound? Otherwise, I would be really confused. Hmm. Just let the stream get back to me on that one. Okay, that's strange then. Uh, thank you very much, Horul. Right on. Uh, I don't know what to suggest there, Ninjimo. I'd say maybe just restart the stream. Might help. Uh, but there's definitely sound. Okay, strange. Um, I don't know what to say there, my man. Don't know what to say, my man. Okay. Right, now question comes down to... Ah, right, no issues there, buddy. What do we have here in terms of aviation support at the moment? So I do have 72, so I can definitely house another squadron here quite easily. Hello there, HNDC, how you doing, my friend? Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is actually house another squadron of G4s, well, a G4 squadron here. I do have the E7s over here. Right, yo. You're currently running reconnaissance for me. Which is your order of battle? Yeah, so you need to be either... Hmm. Okay. Hello there, John Murphy. How you doing? So there, play up, and hello there, Captain Flack. I'm really considering actually having them upgraded. Well, <laughs> basically, uh, quote-unquote upgraded. Possibly to the G3s. The reason being, if I do that, at least we actually do have the numbers here, because we have a whole bunch of G3M2s. It would allow me to actually uh, recombine the squadron. We definitely do need additional um, G4 production. It is ramping up, it's just going to take some time. 
It does make me wonder. Though, granted, it's uh, not exactly efficient as it should we actually upgrade again in the future. Uh, we do have, well, we obviously do have the additional range, which is nice. So it's hard to say no to that. I definitely need some airfields. Okay. Right, well, what we'll do here then? Hmm. I suppose for the time being, we'll just run you in a naval search op capacity. Sign to the 24th Air Flotilla. Odd you should have torpedoes. Quite odd. Hmm. Ah, uh, perhaps you can't use torpedoes on naval search missions. That makes sense. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Right, so we'll run you on a naval search. Though, we could always use them to actually run supplies from KYJ to Tarawa. Uh, probably not a bad idea. We're currently running supplies over here to Tarawa. How much are they carrying? Oh yeah, good load there. Um, I suppose what we'll do then is just run them. Just naval search. And of course they do have 21 hexes of range. Though these arms are out of that range. So we can't really use them too much further out. Let's see. We don't have any other additional airfields here as of yet. Hello there, Major. How you doing, my friend? And the war has actually, it's actually been a good turn for us. Of course, we did have the bomber losses, which did um, hurt us. Uh, but this turn, no such thing. We only lost three bombers. Uh, one to flag, two were uh, damaged and lost to operational. But we did manage to make it through and hit the airfield at Singapore. And uh, he did actually launch a shock attack at Mercy, where our brave men actually did manage to repel it. Now, of course, we do need to take a look at actually running some combat air patrol over our uh, ships over here. Obviously, their speed isn't exactly great. Uh, the light cruise is going to be the one that's going to be targeted first and foremost. So I think we'll run some combat air patrol over there. I could probably run it from the carriers, perhaps. Uh, though the question is going to be, uh, well, we won't have to sweep Singapore again. So I do have an entire squadron of planes I could actually uh, dedicate to protecting the ships there. We'll see. It may be worthwhile doing that with the A6 and two zeros. Obviously, have uh, we could have the Ki-40 freeze the uh, B variants actually protect the Ki-48. Lilies as they go to hit uh, Joe Harbaru. But we'll touch on that one soon. Back over here. Okay. So we remain undetected. Kidabuta is supposedly undetected here. Uh, we can also see that the American Carrier Task Force did move to the south and they didn't, in fact, bombard Funafuti, uh, which was fantastic actually. I think we might take a look at actually. Um, hmm. Let's see. Engineers. Okay. When do we gain our base forces? I think it's about six days. Uh, hello, Van Abaddon. How do you do, my friend? Uh, so it's about six days. Okay. I think what we're going to do then is let's see. I do have aviation support over here, yeah, which is what we need. Okay, so what we're going to do then is going to take the G41 Betty's. I'm in fact going to transfer them over here. I'm not allowed due to the absence of an airfield. Do we actually not have an airfield there? Oh, we don't. Okay, interesting. Hmm. I need to pick them up, don't I? Hello there, James. How you doing, my friend? Right, first of all, what I'm going to tell these guys to do over here is I do want to head out and meet Kidabutai. Uh, yeah, refuel. If you will. Tactical refuel. Your home port is going to be then, uh, well, let's say, we'll say truck. So we'll head back to truck then. Retirement is allowed. And so you'll head out here, tactical refuel. Okay. 18 knots. 
Hmm. I could have the path change there slightly. Okay, we do have another light cruiser and transport ships coming in. Uh, this submarine over here is out of fuel, but it will move slowly but surely back to KYJ. Uh, the issue is that some of our submarines, uh, they don't actually head back until they're absolutely desperate. Hello there, Kasa. How you doing, my friend? Have to keep a greater eye on them. Okay. Right. I was hoping that I could actually uh, use air transportation to move some units out here. That is what I was indeed hoping for. Send them to combat just in case. Right. Yeah, I need to move these engineers. What do we have here? I do have some fuel there. Okay. What we're going to do then is we're going to instead, rather than heading directly to Tarawa, we're going to head over here to the island. What we'll do is we'll pick up some fuel on the island. And we are aware now of course of these uh, submarines in the area. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll move the additional G4M1 squadron over here. Uh, possibly even two of them. Just in the process of getting this game going on my PC. Awesome, dude. Okay. How are these guys looking? Uh, two days, five days. You're planning to be ready in a day. Uh, two days over here. Okay. It's quite a bit of fatigue on them. That's the issue. What do I have here in terms of aviation support? Yeah, so they're actually over here. Uh, so what we need to do then is actually move some of them out. I'll move this larger squadron out. We might even move two of them out. We'll see how things go. So we'll move you to KYJ. There we go. Transferred. Okay. Few of them. Um, damage on the flights. Requiring maintenance. Uh, day, three days, four days. Okay. Hello there, Justin. Not too much. Not too much. We're just going through things here. Okay, so we're currently running naval attack here. Uh, what I'm going to do then is run ASW patrol. The pilots aren't exactly great at it, but it would make uh, make sense. Though I could actually use the G3s potentially. Depends. Of course, these guys do have that extra additional range. If we take a look. So obviously that's 27 hexes. 19 hexes. Uh, so we have range to just about here, maybe even just this island, over that range. So it's not a massive increase, but it is a increase. But then we probably, yeah, we'll have the G4s actually run the ASW, uh, considering they do have that additional range. Okay. Right. I'll use this uh, squadron over here. Just a two-man squadron. I'm going to use them to actually transfer additional supplies to Talawa. All ah, right, yeah, of course, not uh, available to do so. Uh, we could have... Whoops, I'm trying to rebase them there by mistake. Uh, we could have them transfer supplies potentially over here to Wake, considering we only have 507. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll transfer some additional supplies to Wake. It's not a huge amount of supply going to Wake, but we could definitely do with some there. Okay. So what we're going to do then is have 30% of a squadron. Yeah, it has to be used half the distance than normal. Exactly. And so obviously it does make more sense to use the G4s as obviously their range is uh, superior to that of the G3s. Not by much, but at least it does make a difference. Obviously we'll be able to run um, fairly well over here. So if we figure it out then, so 21 hexes, I mean it's either going to be 10 hexes or 11 hexes. Uh, so if we take a look over here then... That's well within range. Uh, Tadawa's out of range. So we're looking at range either between Mackin or an island further. Uh, but it does cover this area. 
would actually include these ships, well, these ships over here, within that ASW range. Okay. So, 72, 6 to 1. So we do have aviation support to uh, look after them here, which is obviously what we want. Uh, we'll take a look at the actual squadron and see how long they're going to need. Of course, it's going to be three day. Yeah, okay. Not bad at all. I think we do definitely need to rest with these planes. So we are going to put in some enforced well, rest here. About 30% of the squadron will rest. Hmm. Yeah. I think we need to rest these planes. Obviously perform the maintenance. It's not so bad on the G3s. I have so many of them in reserve here. I think for the most part it's going to be the G3s that are going to be doing the attacking, really. Due to the fact that we actually do have them in a fair abundance. Hello there, Commissar Ridge. How you doing, my friend? Okay. So you're ready to be packed. Right. There's nothing really much in the way of supply here. Uh, what we are going to do then is load up these troops. I know I said I'd probably keep some of them here. Uh, but I think due to the fact that we have a lack of supply, I think it's worthwhile just to hold the island. Um, if we need troops, we'll move them. Right, so begin to load them. Then if I load, we'll have them move back to Talawa. Once we do have something to actually send over here, of course, I do want to really build up my forces here, uh, as we'll need them. They are within our protection. Of course, within the range of naval bombers. Okay. So I'm going to have you loaded again. Right, load troops. Loading. Yep, troop load only. Go ahead. Except load. There we go. We'll have them then move back to Talawa. Doing well, currently trying to learn one of these. Awesome, dude. Um, my advice would be just to go into the actual main campaign. It seems really daunting, but at the end of the day, it's the best way to learn. I need aviation support here really soon. Uh, that's for sure. Okay. I need these H6Ks moved out of here. One of them are ready soon. I had to leave a bit. Uh, what important things have happened in the Pacific since the, well, since turn 19? Uh, well, we're on turn 20 now, aren't we? Well, technically turn 20, but obviously in the terms of episodes, it's turn 19 still, but turn 20. Uh, in between turn 19, so... We did manage to make it through over here to Singapore, where we did actually bomb the airfield. We did repulse a allied shock attack at Mersing. We're about to have reinforcements arrive over here at Mersing. Of course, we do need to cover them. We saw that um, his fighter numbers really aren't present. He does have a large amount of bombers still, so we do need to be careful of that. Uh, which does make me think then, okay, we'll put these guys to full speed. Were they on cruise speed? Strange. Hmm... Need to be careful. AA isn't exactly amazing. I really would not like to lose an additional cruiser here. Hmm. We'll have them protected by a squadron of A6M20s, I'd say. I'll use the 3rd KUS. Now, I do have an abundance of uh, pilots here. We've currently got them sent to no replacements. But what are we going to do then? Right, so escort. I'm going to have... Um, I need 100% of the squadron on this, to be fair. So I'm going to have the entire squadron concerned with protecting the 440 first. The reason being, I'd imagine he is going to be sending bombers out this way. Uh, so it could be a good way to take down some of his bombers. We are going to continue the attacks on Singapore. I'm somewhat tempted to actually use the G3 M2s as well. Really pile in the damage. I suspect the fact that um, 
Yeah, I suspect that uh, the Prince of Wales and the Repulse have left Singapore. I don't know when exactly they are. I do find it rather fun, but they've actually escaped me. Uh, we'll find them at a later date. I'd imagine they're probably down here in Batavia. Or they've actually probably headed back over to India at some point. Uh, possibly with the times where we haven't actually been running naval search or been distracted by ACW. Uh, possibility that is definitely uh, something to take into consideration. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yep, the map is still available. If you head over into the Discord and you go down... Uh, one second. Yep, so on the Discord. If you go down here to Warren Pacific, go down here to Pinned, and if you take a look at... Yeah, this post here from Marshal Tito, basically Lupus, uh, you can find here... Yeah, uh, here are all the ChemKid maps in a single map file. There you go. You can pick that up, as well as... Yeah, just basically look at this pin post over here. Has everything you'll need. There you go, my man. Okay. I think we'll use the G freeze over here from Kotaburu. Now, currently they are running uh, naval attack down in this area. Right, couple of these G freeze are ready to head out of the Takao KUK. Where's your squadron? Uh, yeah, there we go. We'll send you over there to meet up with the rest of your squadron. Yeah, no issue, dude. Right, go combine with your squadron. Now, how many squadrons do I have here? Just the one. Hello, the AT. How you doing, my man? Yeah, I really do wish I had more G4s. I've got a lot of G3s, but not many G4s. Yeah, it really is an awesome map, right? See, so I'd like to move in these additional KU... Uh, sorry, KI-21s. Right, where's your units? Kotaburu, okay. Send them over. There we go. That's another three bombers. Okay, so um, I could split the squadron actually, which I will do. So we'll divide it. So that's about seven, seven, six, apparently. Seven, seven, six. Okay, that's not bad. Right. Yeah, G8N1s, they'd be great. <laughs> okay. Though... I'm not going to watch the Saudi in terms of uh, ships. Uh, there's supposedly a heavy cruiser over here, but I do have submarines all over this area. How can they fly without pilots? Oh, God damn it! Right, rebuild them. Okay. How long until they're ready? Uh, two days and we'll have them all ready. That's fantastic. Where's the rest of your squadron? Uh, Babal Dwarb. Okay. Uh, we'll transfer the two planes that are ready. Over here as well. Build up our numbers over that way. Yeah, I think what we'll do then is we'll have the G-Forces watch this area. The entrance to the Straits of Malacca. Uh, I do have submarines down in this area over here. We'll actually really pick up our presence this way. But I've made a sacrifice in the fact of... Uh, in terms of in terms of sacrifice in the Dutch East Indies, I've moved uh, squadrons over this way, over here. Now, of course, I do have a G3 squadrons. So I could potentially keep one of them running. The issue is I don't want to be drawn into attacks on ships that aren't worthwhile. So I think it might be worthwhile for the time being to have another 70 bombers hit Singapore. So if we take the... Yeah. Uh, so of course that's another 500 kilograms of bombs. Which is nice. We'll have them operate at the same altitude of 12,000 feet. There we go. Though... I would like additional um, support, Vance, I'm sure. So I think what I'll do here then. I'll take the third KUS. 
divide the unit. Right. So we've got 15 there. 14, 14. Okay. So what I'll do then is uh, we'll have two squadrons. Hmm. I want to have Zeros travel with them. So we're going to have them run escort here. But what we're going to do then... I really want them to sign. Hmm. Would it be a good idea to shock a deliberate attack at Mercy? Remember... Well, the thing is we could do that, but I wouldn't say we could pull it off now. Uh, had the numbers been lower... Then we could have, but the thing is, uh, he does have a lot of numbers. I just think it's one of those things of where, if we build up sufficient force, maybe, but we were vastly outnumbered in terms of actual salt value. Uh, they may have uh, failed in their own attack, but doesn't mean they're actually particularly weak. I understand the thinking there. Had the numbers been lower or similar, then I would have considered it, but I think it's too risky. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, they had like 250 or something in that region. Uh, what I'm considering here is let's take a look. I might run them at 13,000 feet. Right. 13,000 feet along with the Ki 43 1Bs. So you're going to be set to escort. I'm going to have you escort to Singapore. There we go. Uh, we have the Ki-431Bs. Right. Uh, so we're going to how long until we have your additional planes? Yeah, so in a day we'll have the rest of the squadron available. Fantastic. That is very good news. Yeah, <laughs> that's really good news. I mean, the squadron really did uh, suffer quite a few there. That's good news. Okay, so I'm going to have you run escort at 13,000 feet. So what we're going to do then is we're going to have the G3s join the attack at 13,000 feet. So airfield attack, Singapore if you please. There we go. Right, all G3M2s in the space. There we go. The reason why we're running at 13,000 feet is basically what we want to do is we want to have separate flights here. Uh, so we want to have our KI-21 uh, 2As run together along with the main uh, Zero Squadron. At, uh, well, these guys are running at 20,000 feet. Mm. They should manage it nonetheless. Though... Well, the thing is, is there going to be any enemy fighters? It says 24 there, but we can deal with that. I suppose, um... It's more so for the air coordination I'm thinking here, to make sure the bombers are protected. And uh, the thing is, we do have more maneuverability than the enemy fighters. Their crews aren't great. We will outnumber him in terms of fighters, uh, dramatically so. Um, hmm. Okay. What I may do is actually use the zeros for the carriers then. So we have 30 of them. I think we'll use the carrier-based zeros. Probably for the best. Uh, no, I've not used my paratroopers as of yet. We'll be using them in the future. I'm really going to have them... Uh, I think I'm going to have them shifted into the Malaya area and then we'll have them flown into Sumatra. That's what I'd really like to do. Okay. I'll have you protect Task Force 41441. Uh, there we go. Right, all carrier fighters in this hex do the same. Have you run... Um, we'll have the larger squadron, I think, run at 20,000 feet. There we go. Okay. So what I could do here then... Hmm. Okay, we'll run the uh, G3M2 nails at 
12,000 feet. Yeah, I'm thinking about a combat patrol over Mersing. It's not that urgent, but obviously it would be quite nice to catch out his bombers there. <sighs> That's really what we want. Okay. What are we looking at in terms of capacity here? Uh, so we are above the capacity we have available in terms of aviation. I am building up the airfield, which is going to head pretty nice. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, we'll have additional engineers here soon. Though. I think if it wasn't for this unit unpacking, we'd actually be able to uh, reorganize them. Yeah, basically rebuild the 18th. Yeah, it seems that way. Everybody's in combat mode, so yeah, it's due to the fact that I'm packing, but that's fine. We'll build them back up. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. What I'm going to do here, then, is I'm going to move the Yamada Detachment. Okay. So I'm going to have you transfer to a low star. The reason for that is I'm going to run another mission here. So what we're going to do is turn all that off. Okay, fatigue's not too bad. Uh, so what I'm going to do is escort you over to Johaburu. There we go. 20,000 feet, yes please. Uh, we are going to use the uh, KI-48-1B Lilies. Now they have been training in airfield attack. Okay. So the bombers are... Mixed, <laughs> to say the least. We do have some lemons in here. Go for an airfield attack then. We're going for about 12,000 feet. Really want to be outside the range of their AA for the most part. There's not as many guns here, but I do want to make sure we're out of their range. So we're going for... That, there we go. Range to 11. You do have the range, which is what we need. So now you should fly with 15 zeros escorting you to Johobru. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, I don't know if that one's true, to be honest. I suppose it's... Uh, I mean, this has happened on the 26th of December, so they've transferred. And obviously the mission would come tomorrow on the 27th of December, give or take. So I suppose they might come online. <sighs> so to that end, we'll have obviously a great amount of zeros here to ask out. Hmm. Okay. I do wonder then... Is it perhaps worthwhile? Do we split the third KUS, or do we have the third KUS actually run over Mersing, basically, long-range combat air patrol over there? It could be worthwhile, perhaps. Hmm. I don't think it's going to hit Mersing again. I think the thing is, it doesn't particularly matter much about Mersing. Uh, so I'm not really going to put assets over there. If he bombs the uh, troops on the ground again, fair dues. Uh, I don't think he can get away with another attack so soon. I think it'd really hurt him. Uh, reinforcements should make it through. We might lose a ship, but I think we'll be okay with some actual uh, fighter cover. Uh, so what I think I'll do then is, let's see. I'll split the third KUS. So I'll split them. What I'll do then is I'll run a squadron. Or perhaps two squadrons. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I wish I'd transferred them earlier in the war, to be fair. Okay. Right. So I want 100% uh, combat air patrol over Task Force 441. Now, 
I think what we'll do here then is run long range combat air patrol over Mersing. Just some of them, I suppose. I might have more of them. Yeah. I think we'll throw about 30, just under 30. Looks to be, yeah, about 28 of them. So we'll throw 28 zeros over Mersing then, just in case. Uh, but we'll have a third of a squadron actually out there to help protect uh, Task Force 441. As well as potentially shoot down any enemy uh, fighters. I do wonder if any might actually come here to attack Kutabaru. Hard to say. It is a hard thing to say, really. He could actually come over here very well and attack me. I'd imagine he'd probably pull something like that off. He does have a large amount of bombers. I think what we might do then here is perhaps we use a squadron of zeros in defense. Or even the Kai 431 bs Um. Okay. Hmm. Hard question. Hard question. I mean, forty-five zeros is a huge amount there. Very large. We do have a lot of bombs to protect, though. <sighs> Use the Oscars on combat air patrol, but the thing is, the Oscars lack cannon, so they're not particularly effective against bombers. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a squadron of the 3rd KUS actually remain behind to actually protect the airfields. I think that's the safest way of doing things. So what I'll do is I'll target Kutaburu. Okay. So I'll run 100% combat air patrol for this turn. Now of course that allows the uh, Oscar 1Bs to continue in their mission. No kill light overkill. Well... I don't think the Oscars are up to it. See, the Zeros have a gun value of 12. The Oscars... ...have a gun value of only 5. It's, it's just not enough. Just not enough. Durability is 23. Zeros have 22. Not as durable, but they have far, far more gun value. And that's more than twice their uh, armament value, so that is why... I really would want to have these zeros here. Yep. So we'll have... Um, one detachment sent over to guard Task Force 441. We'll have one detachment here to guard Kutaburu. We'll have another detachment uh, to guard Mersing. Right, long range combat patrol. There we go. So, I think uh, like this is probably the safest. It's a little bit more of a cautious approach, but it does mean that we are looking after our forces here. Of course, then the ki 431 bs will sally out with the Zeros, and the G3s, and the KI-21s. I do wish I had more aircraft stack here. I think it's just the most pragmatic approach here. And now we are building up to the next level of airfield, which is fantastic. If only we had more engineered vehicles. That'd be nice. And now, in theory, I should actually be able to upgrade planes here. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to have you head out here to meet with the rest of them. I think uh, these H6K4s are just far, far more valuable in the Pacific than they are over here in Malaya. There we go. Does help out with the aircraft stack over here too.
Okay, so you run reconnaissance over uh, Singapore. Uh, what I'm going to do then is run reconnaissance over Johor Bahru. I'm going to have you run naval search, actually. Yeah, quite damaged. Some of these are uh, Patani, some are Lone Star. Right, I see. Hmm. Okay. What I'm going to do is go grab them. Air transport. You bar in my room. I'll have you escorted by two sub chasers. Well, patrol boats. Make it free patrol boats. Now, what I want you to do is head over here to Patani. So that's only one hex away, only about a 40 mile trip. Uh, what we're going to tell them to do then is actually load up the uh, planes over here. We'll have them shifted over here to Singora. Uh, the main thing is we need to actually get them on the rail line so we can actually move them. Uh, we always need rail lines. Rail lines are really the lifeline here. Okay. So run reconnaissance over Singapore, Johor Bahru. Uh, what I'd like to do now is run reconnaissance just over the rest of the island for the most part. We definitely need further information. Right, then over here on the Dutch East Indies as well. I'd say over here on Madan. There we go. Hmm. I'm currently not running supply and transportation here. Um, I'll run it over here to summer. I need to load up my actual paratroopers as well. Okay, let's see, what do we have here? Okay, disband this. Disband. Alright, supply here, that's good to see. Okay, but it's not what I need right now. Fifth Air Division, 23rd Air Flotilla. So there's only two reconnaissance units over here. What I'll do then is have them transfer command to the 5th Air Division. There we go. So the 23rd Air Flotilla, we're looking at uh, 1,296 troop cost. And then cargo load's actually zero, which is quite nice. Okay. I'm going to give them additional torpedo ordnance. There we go, 100. Okay. Hard to say where the future objective would be. Transport. I suppose if I can move them in amphibious, we don't have to put them into strategic mode. Uh, so at least we'd be able to say two days there, which would be good. So let's take a look then. So obviously we want troop capacity. 
yeah, I do have the Hakone Maru. That's a lot of troop load. Uh, but what I'm going to do is actually take three of these, or four of these small ships. I do have these guys over here, the Kyushus. They are far, far too viable for this role, though. They do it well. Ah, so it comes down to the question of... Um, hmm... They do the job and they do it bloody well. They do it quickly as well. But I really can't justify throwing them away. Yeah, it's not worth it. I could take the troop transport, but I don't think it's worthwhile because the issue is then. If it's sunk, that unit is just annihilated and I can't allow that. So I'll send them over a couple of ships. I do have these guys over here at 14 knots, so we can actually make do with that. Yeah, we'll do that. Ah, just the one here. Oh no, hang on. Sweet. Uh, you can find this over here, Tristan, one second. So if you head over to the Discord... Bring that up one sec. Yeah, so if you head over here to the Discord and you go to pin, so down here, one in Pacific, and then find the post here by Lupus. And this is everything you need right here. So you can see map mods all there. Easy to find. All in one nice folder. Right, so what we're going to do then is we're going to take the ships with 40 knot uh, top speed. What's that give me? 1190, I think that is all we need. Um, I'll just create it and then double check. Let's have a look. 23rd Air Flotilla. Uh, 1296, we need an additional one in there. Right, these guys actually do have some uh, operations points left. So if I grab them, might be able to get going sooner. I'll take the uh, Takao. Uh, you as well. Okay, yeah, no issues there, my man. Okay, not obviously these guys. I'll take you then. That takes us to 1390, which is what we need. Okay. Now what I'm going to do then is not load any supplies here. Uh, are they in transportation or amphibious? They're currently in amphibious, that's what I like. Okay, 23rd Air Flotilla. Yep. Verify the load. Accept load. There we go. Okay, so they'll actually be loaded here in combat mode, which means that we're not wasting any time. Hello there, Blinson. Uh, what changes have been made since the last stream? Well, what we're going to do then is we are going to have uh, these two units merge over here. So, uh, Task Force 107 is going to merge with 444. 439 is going to head over here, but 444 will merge with them. I've transferred a squadron of G4M1s out here. They're going to be running ASW duties for the time being. Right, seems I'm actually suffering from uh, stack here. Let's see, if I rebuild this unit, does that actually help? No, it does not. Okay, what I'm going to do then is rebase this G4 unit over here to Rhinema. I do have uh, base force engineers of us, so that's what I need. Yep, they can continue with their mission of supplies. Uh, just to wake. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Okay, we'll double check that. Still complaining. Hmm. I should. Could I upgrade you? Could you do that as of now? Let's have a look. Not yet. Right. Invite the unit. Have one of them run night ops. Uh, no ship intrusive Quantan. Yeah, we're going to be checking on the paratroopers soon. Uh, the troops that we were thinking about moving to Kwantan, uh, it was reasonable suggestion that we, in fact, have them move to Mersing, uh, where their presence actually will make a difference. 
Now, we aren't entirely certain where his forces are over here. Yet, anyway. But what we're going to do then is... Uh, we'll take a look shortly at moving our paratroopers. What we're doing at the moment is actually preparing to move the 20... The 23rd Air Flotilla, which we're just getting ready for now. 60 of them aboard. I don't think it'll take us too long considering the 23rd Air Flotilla is only... Yeah, it's over a 1,000 men. 1,200 men. We'll assign a uh, escort. Okay, not much in the way of escorts. Okay. I am going to put them a additional cruiser miner in there. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I do have some destroyers over here. They're actually heading out this way now. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do then is, let's take a look. How do these guys compare? ASW's four, so only two of these actual destroyers have ASW capacities. Okay. Uh, what we'll do then is we'll grab Surface Combatant. Yeah, only two of them. I'll grab Asakazi and uh, Fumizuki. Okay. Uh, you're going to go ahead and meet with Task Force 9. Actually, not Task Force 9. Uh, Task Force 17. So merge with 17. There we go. You're heading to Takao. That's good. I can actually use you to um, escort another force. So we do have our paratroopers on the way. Um, Yokosuka's over here. Right, they're actually staying put for the time being. Right, I do have one element of them here. Ah. Okay, so today we'll be able to reorganize the 56th Division. Yes. Okay, we'll put everybody into uh, combat mode here. There we go, combat mode. So once they're unloaded... Well, once they're unpacked, uh, what we'll be able to do then is reform the 56th Division, which is going to be exceptional. Uh, which is actually really, really good. So what we'll do then is we'll use the 56th Division. It actually does help to alleviate issues to a significant degree. Uh, because I could actually use the 56 potentially to participate in the invasion of the Dutch East Indies, or I could use them in the South Pacific. I think I'll have a 56 earmarked for the Dutch East Indies. Is Miriam all those oil producing areas going to be taken? Yeah, we have uh, troops over here at Brunei and Miri. We are going to be attacking next turn. Uh, I think what we'll do then is we'll have that division made ready then to help us assault the Dutch East Indies. Uh, what we could do potentially is have them transported over here to Malaya. I think that's probably for the best. I think should we actually take air cont well, control of the skies over Malaya? We can actually move. I mean, once we subdue his bombers, it's going to be uh, much easier. We do need to look at this airfield over here. This is more than likely where he's basing additional uh, bombers from. Um... Indeed. Right, you're returning to replenish here at the moment. What we're going to do is actually tell you to replenish at sea. I do have the AV over here. Right, just a tactical refuel if you will. Thank you. You can see they actually took the fuel from the AV here. Hmm. So, there, Rainbow, how you doing, my man? Can't transfer in here. Okay. Take a car, see. Right. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to give you uh, two escorts, Hakakazi, uh, Haka well, Hakazi and Takakazi. Uh, the two uh, shorter ranged destroyers. Then what I'm going to do here is we do have Hosho and Taiyo. The light crews and Tori, and then four destroyers over here. So we have at least some decent SW capacities. Uh, what I'm thinking here is, uh, right, first and foremost, cancel that crap. You're not going anywhere. Right, here. Okay. Right, so your home ports are side gone. I uh, can't move them river. Okay. We'll have you instead head over here to Cameron Bay. And I could have you based at Hong Kong now, actually, considering the mines are 
more than likely cleared. We'll probably give it some additional time, but they should more than likely be cleared. I think what I'll do then is I'll have you base over here to Kamran Bay, considering the size of the port there, so we'll have you base there at Kamran. Um, I could do with some additional fuel, that's for damn sure. But I think what we'll do for the time being... See, what I'm thinking here is potentially we use our escort carriers. Rangoon and all that supply going towards China under pressure. Uh, we do have a unit on its way over there. So, of course, we don't have huge numbers in this area. What I'm really doing here at the moment is concentrated on the Malayan campaign. Uh, once Malaya has been subdued, things become uh, far easier as we do gain a massive air base and naval base in the area. I'm not really going to move into Burma until that point. Uh, China is... Well, the thing is, I could move over here to help take out their supply, uh, but it's not going to make an immediate difference quite yet. We need to focus on Malaya. One objective really at a time, otherwise we are going to face losing uh, control here. Uh, what I'm thinking here is potentially we use our escort carriers potentially to move in over here. We do have some light bomber aircraft, of course we are very light bomber aircraft. In terms of the B5M1s and as well as the other ones. Now the B5M1s actually have a fairly decent bomb load. That's not bad at all, is it? 250 kilograms, about 500 kilograms of bombs. That's not bad at all for a torpedo bomber. Um, of course the other ones are... Yeah, I can't say this. Actually, you know what? That's, <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> it's actually not bad at all. Holy moly, that's not bad at all. Okay. Your range is uh, 7, so it's not bad. Not bad. We lack torpedoes, but not bad. Do I have torpedoes aboard any of them? Torpedoes here. But none aboard here. Okay. 20 aircraft. Why can't you use torpedoes? You not have enough torpedoes. That makes sense. Lacking torpedoes here. Okay. Hmm. So we've got a range of 7, we've got a range of 9. And uh, what's the range of the A5M4s? Uh, 6. Okay. Right. Out of range of Singapore, out of range of Johabru. Okay, so I think what we're going to do then is we are going to move to this position over here. Yep, uh, a little bit closer to Singapore and Johabru. But it does distance us a little bit more from down here. Uh, I think what we're going to do then is we're going to head to Hex 6085. Right, put you on a patrol instead. Sixty-eight to six. Fifty-nine. Fifty-nine eighty-five. Sixty eighty-five. Okay. Link of that. If I take a look at that, then six hacks is okay. What I'm thinking is we use our escort carriers actually to put some pressure on that airfield there. And we only have a couple bombers, but I think at the end of the day. Uh, we could go in for a low-level sweep there. I doubt he's going to have much, and he's not going to have much in the way of actual combat air patrol, I'd imagine. Um, so I think we can take some some pressure off there. Now, of course, I would like to actually combine the carrier fleets. And I do want to be very careful with my actual uh, carriers in general. But I think if we do this, it would actually help us out to ensure the security in the area. Uh, it's up for debate, anyway. It's up for debate. Hmm. Uh, what do you guys think, then? Do you think it's worthwhile doing that? I suppose we don't have to... Uh, no, I don't think it's worthwhile, actually. Uh, considering that we do have our bombers that will be able to reach down here, and it's not risking a vital carrier, we'll instead have them um, head, uh, head back and pick up some additional fuel, but leave the area. It's not worth risking them. We'll have you head over here to Kamran Bay. I would like to actually upgrade that aircraft. That's for damn sure. 
Okay. Yeah, we can always base aircraft over here itself. So we have a size 2 airfield here. Nice size port there, but no airfield. So we'll have you head into Miri. Okay. Low threat threshold. Obviously, do not engage the enemy. I'm trying to, re well, repulse them. Uh, we do have two capable destroyers. They're not the... Actually, no, these are fucking Minikazis. God damn, I want these things. Yeah, these are both Minikazis. Yeah, these are viable. Okay, so once we actually do get the AV in here, we will have those Minikazis return to Japan to be overhauled. Or we could even have them uh, head to Hong Kong to be overhauled. Obviously converted to APDs. See, having APDs is going to be really, really great. I mean, the thing is, uh, until we of course have the radar, we will be able to make use of them. Like, really, really heavy use of these APDs. It means that, uh, well, in reality... We can have some very specialized landing forces moved via warships. So we'll be able to move faster. We're not going to carry much in the way of supply, but we can actually use them for rapid raids. And we can also use them for rapid redeployments of forces to where they're needed. And, but yeah, APDs are going to be freaking fantastic. I mean, it would have been nice, but it's it's just not worth the uh, cost here. At the end of the day, this is two escort carriers. Granted, they only have something in the region of, what, 40 capacity? Uh, actually, no, just just around about 50 capacity, about 47, something in that region. Uh, but 47 planes on carriers is still 47 planes. They might be terrible as escort carriers in terms of actual uh, class and design, but blow me down, I'd rather have them alive in the future to fight battles. So we need them. Absolutely. Now, we have very little in the way of information here... So what we are going to do then is we're going to have them head over here to Saigon. Uh, well, to Kotobru, actually. Now, you're still active. you still got your ASW munitions, which is what we need. Uh, you are too. Yeah, you do a fantastic job. What I'm going to do then is have you uh, move there. And move there. Okay. You still have munitions, right, these APDs. Two capacities, 150. Uh, so bear in mind that the Minikazi APDs have a capacity of 250, so vastly different to the Momies. But these all have their, their value. Like, they can't carry too much, I mean, they can only carry like 150 cargo. But it could be very useful in actually transporting units. Very useful. They are rather slow, however. But very useful. Hmm. What I'll do is actually have them moved into Kotobaru. I could use them. Uh, in the future. I'll keep them running in... Uh, running... Uh, ASW for the time being. But in the future, we'll actually have them used to move engineers, I'd say. Right, I've actually got some engineers aboard here. That's what I like to see. Uh, 426 troops. Tanker here with oiler. Learn has been completed. Uh, tanker here with uh, auxiliaries. Yeah, especially important is the auxiliary repair. We also have a destroyer tender here. Uh, auxiliary, well, miscellaneous auxiliary. Uh, basically, the AGs are munitions. They definitely do help out in that regard. We also have Natoro. So, I think what we're going to do here, then, is we'll combine these forces. Uh, so, we'll have them put onto a... Hmm. Let's see, if I go with Escort. Okay, I can transfer them all in here. How oh, can I? So I'm not seeing the ones with actual uh, troop support. Okay, we'll move them separately. I'll keep you in reserve here. Yeah. 
Right, see, because you've got your troops loaded in combat mode, you can't actually be moved in with anybody else. Uh, what we'll do then... Hmm... I'll have you escorted by Yamogi and Hagikaze. And then we'll come back for the uh, auxiliary forces. But we are going to have you head out here, I'd say, to... Well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them head out here to Batani. Because that means I can actually repair the aircraft I actually have there. Uh, which is what I need. Now, these guys are freaking fantastic. They do have a very great troop load. Uh, so we can actually use them in aid in here, which is good news. We'll have them head out there. Right, you need to rearm. Well, refuel. But rearm too. Uh, return. Yeah, return. Turn of Mac. Okay. <sighs> Fuel's a little bit lighter than I would like. I can refuel at Cutter Baru, though, so that's good news. Okay. What I want you to do is return to Cutter Baru. I want you to actually refuel. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll actually have them head out over here to Saigon to escort the Oilers over here. Now then, let's take a look at range. Uh, eight hexes. So really, I want to be about nine hexes away. So I can get away with this. It does put us in range of Johabaru, but uh, we don't need to worry as much. I think what we'll do then is... I could have the ki 43 one as actually escort the carriers. Yeah, we do also have a fantastic amount of um, AA over here. Really good. A lot of warships. I need to make use of you guys. Currently, you're in reconnaissance over Singapore as well. Hmm. Yeah, I would very much wager that he's, uh, uh, large ships have left over here. Okay, I'm also going to use them to run, uh, reconnaissance over there. Okay, what I'm going to do is actually form another ASW task force. Hmm, fuel's running low here. Okay. Move you to Kutabaru. Two nine four. Right, there we go. Uh, so we'll have another ASW mission there. I have a lot of troop capacity here. Need to make use of it. See, I do have... Where are you needed? 14th Tank Regiment. Do you not build up to anything? Hmm. 
Right, I see. Are you just an independent? It seems that way at the moment. That they're potentially an independent force. I think what we'll do then is have them um, uh, begin moving. Uh, so I'd like you to move over here to a low star. Hmm. Okay. Uh, move these additional engineers over here to low starman. See, I do have these elements of naval guard. I would like to move down here. Well, potentially to Mersing. We'll see. What headquarters do I have here? 25th Army. Yamashita. Okay. Hmm. It is building disruption here. So we'll have them um, uh, taken off and placed in rest. Okay. So that uh, division's actually spread out here. <laughs> no, ideally there shouldn't be a big delay between turns. Uh, not sick either, which definitely does help out a significant degree. Okay. See, I need to reform these divisions. We'll be able to reform another one over here in the next two days, which is great news. And then be able to reform another one here in a day, or two days. As uh, so we really are building up our forces here. As uh, so we'll have the 56th division, we'll be able to move soon. We'll have another two, three divisions, something uh, coming along shortly. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. I'm glad that we'll be able to base, uh, we'll move a division base over here at Formosa to the Dutch East Indies. And that's going to come out uh, greatly useful. Indeed. I think we need to neutralize this bombers to such a degree that we are able to move here without too much in the way of worries. Uh, these Oscar 1As really need to be phased out. We would love to upgrade them here. I'm going to tell them to not upgrade as of yet because I don't want them to do it um, here. Not yet. Okay. When do we gain the rest of them? A couple days now. You're running combat air patrol of a low star. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually run escort over the carriers, just just for additional safety more than anything. There we go. But eventually we'll have them upgraded to Ki four three one Cs. Speaking of which. Almost ready to go. Right, two days we'll have the entire squadron. They're kind of being wasted out here and it is bothering me. Wait for them to all come online. Okay. What I'm going to do then is rebase these Oscars to Hankow. Rebase them there.
Okay. Right. Move you to Hankow. I'm going to move my bombers now to Hankow. Uh, we'll be able to operate. We fight to cover. Uh, we'll bomb the Chinese. A lot of these old bastards. It'll be good for their training as well. Now, they don't carry much. Yeah, not much at all. Only about 200 kilograms of bombs. But still, there's a few numbers of them, so it will be helpful. How we're looking... Okay, not enough required here. I could do a building, uh, well, having another headquarters head out to the front. I'll have them all assigned to seven for the moment. Not you. Only the 13th Air Division. Okay. That's fine. Ten thousand feet be fine. Okay. We'll hit this force over here. All K fifty one annoyers. There we go. So, uh, 72 bombers there. Have them escorted. So they're running 10,000 feet there. That'll be fine. Yep, so we'll start to bomb, the, bomb this force over here, which is going to be good news. Uh, should ideally make it an easy victory for once we do come upon them. Now, we are going to just defend here for the time being. Really until we can assess the situation. I do need to run me some supplies over here, however. Load is an amazing... Uh, Range is only four hexes, but that is sufficient for my needs. Base on my canton. Okay. Uh, supply, transport. Uh, Wu Chao. Keep them supplied.
Right, two days. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have you stood down here. So I want you to uh, be repaired. As soon as they're repaired, I'm going to have them sent out. I need to move them. See, they have 10 gun value, which is really quite good. Uh, so we'll have... They're basically upgunned uh, Kai 43 sees And uh, we're going to have them moved out into Malaya to ideally deal with additional bombers as well. Definitely need them. They are pretty damn good. They're fairly effective. Alright, you're heading out here to refuel. Good. Soon we'll be able to move the Maya. Indeed. Okay. Uh, so we are going to be hitting, so we take a level bombers, yeah, we're going to be hitting uh, Singapore with 140, sorry, 131 bombers, which is good news. Throwing the Navy bombers in there as well, as well as additional carry 21 uh, two A's. Yeah. Should have a couple more of them ready as well soon. But we are going to hit uh, Singapore as hard as possible. So, let's figure this out then. So we have... 61 Ki-21 2As here at the moment. Uh, so if we work that out... Now, I think... Are they carrying a thousand kilograms? Yeah, they carry a thousand kilograms of their default. Um, Singapore is well within range. Okay, so... How many did I say there? Okay. So, 61. So, 61 times a thousand. What's that? 61,000 uh, kilograms of bombs. And then, of course, we have our 70 G freeze. So, 70 times 500. I think they carry 500 kilograms. Yeah, 500 kilograms. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of weight there that we're going to be dropping on Singapore. That's going to be absolutely amazing. Of course, I could even bring the ki 48 into this, but I'm not going to do that. So, yes, we are going to be hitting uh, Singapore with 131 bombers. Yeah. Good news. So, we'll see the amount of damage here increase and increase. We're also going to hit his airfield over here, which is good news. Increase the damage over there as well. Uh, basically, we want it to be uh, where there's no safe haven. So whenever his aircraft go, we need to bomb those airfields and really drive him out of the region. Once we get to a point at which we can actually move without worry in terms of actual, uh, well, air attack, we'll be good. Right, so you're heading to Cameron Bay. That's what I need. Just replenish. Reduces your range, but I'd rather not to run out of fuel halfway. Not that we would, but it's fine. Okay. So we are to march now on Minitler with the 16th Division. Um, we're over here. Yeah, don't worry about it, man. Uh, we'll take it next turn. We'll, well, ideally, we'll take it next turn. We'll be launching our attack this turn anyway. Let's see. I think what we'll do then is we'll take our bombers over here. I'll actually have them set to ground attack. So, I'll have you hit Brunei. A few bombs won't hurt. B5 and two Kates. I'll have them um, bomb Miri as well. A parting gift, really. A parting gift, but it should help to uh, take Brunei and Miri. Okay. Right. See, one day we'll be able to convert all these K-27s over. Should be fantastic. And uh, we really want K-27s just for training planes. 
Okay. Fourth, sorry, fourth division will be unloaded here shortly. Second division. So we have elements in Tokyo. Elements all over, really. Some on Midway, some on Purdue Knives, some on Marie. <laughs> some over here. Yeah, okay. And we'll have to try and reform this second division. Eventually. Right, tankers are finally on their way back, carrying some oil. Only 5,000 units of oil. Uh, but at least it's some additional oil in Japan. Right, the Nova Defense Force still in place here. Hmm. Port expansion is going to take a very long time. AV's moving out. Yeah, it would be interesting. Of course, Singapore is a large air base, so it's going to take some time. Uh, but in reality, the it'll take a couple of days for us to knock it completely out. Of course, once we do completely knock it out, means we'll have to repair it ourselves. Uh, it's going to cost us in terms of supply, but really what we want to do is... Um, break his ability to base there. We don't have to completely burn the airfield to the ground, but we just simply have to force him to move his air units out of there. And the good news is we'll be able to catch some of them on the ground and really start destroying them. I want to knock out his bombers, mostly. Mainly the B-17s. Hmm. Rebase at Kotoburu. Okay, these subs are heading to uh, Babal Duab to refuel rearm. Yeah, we're actually banging the money here. Yeah, B-17s are awful. <laughs> right. Yeah, it seems we can't rebuild them as of yet. What we're trying to do here is really build them up. So what I'm going to do is actually send these additional H6Ks, um, really, to Tarawa. Okay, speaking of Tarawa. No, I can't make an additional speed. Uh, it is what it is. Okay, waypoint. Blades ahead directly away and then back in. You can manage that. Once you refuel, you'll head back to truck. Okay. So we do have two crews of Mylars over here. They're going to come in extremely, well, extremely, uh, well, uh, come in extremely handy once we actually do get over here to New Mexico and we can start to mine the area. Okay. These sub patrols have been put on absolute. It looks as though he did have something uh, move out here. We'll see. Heading is currently southwest. Definitely looks like he's heading back over here. Hmm. 
partly cloudy. Okay. Run reconnaissance of a Palmyra. I want to know what he has. Shame that I too lacks aircraft. Hmm. Yep, stand station here at Johnston. I think it's actually been worthwhile. Uh, really didn't expect to find anything here, but it has actually proven to bear fruit. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely worthwhile. It may provoke him to move earlier, or not move. He's definitely doing something. See, Johnson's too far down for B-17s, but it doesn't mean that he isn't really laying the groundwork uh, for that to be used as a bomber base. Or he could even be using it as a search base. Uh, we definitely need additional information. I'm just wondering, is it worthwhile actually splitting these forces so that uh, at least some of the base force arrives there sooner? It could be worthwhile, actually. Take these faster elements. Yeah, would make uh, better progress. Let's take a look. What do we make at 40 knots? Okay. That might come down to operations, to be honest. I think it is an operations there. Obviously, from them moving about. Uh, but we'll have them all head out there. Obviously, broken up into different forces. Um, half tempted to half. Yeah. I think what we'll do here then. Take the 15 Motta. Yeah, look at that. She makes four hexes per turn now. It's obviously not great doing this, because it is uh, rather dangerous. But I think at the end of the day, if we have them all travel with uh, similar speed ships, uh, we might make an extra day or two. Obviously the range has been reduced there. But yeah, I mean, that's definitely helped out here. Rather than moving at two hexes per turn, or three hexes per turn, you're moving at four. Which is good, so that means you'll arrive here much sooner. Indeed. If I was to head at five hexes, then yeah, we could be there about a week. But I think that's a uh, excessive use of fuel that really isn't worthwhile. Four hexes per day is pretty good. Hmm. Okay. We'll go with that. Of course, we do need to send out some actual escorts out here. Um, the good news is, let's take a look over here then. So, the G3 is obviously with their 18 hex range. They do cover wake, which is good news. So at least we'll actually have some uh, coverage out this way. I could have a G4s that would definitely be able to cover it. I do have a destroyer here, actually. Urakazi. She's under repair right now. Yeah, she suffered her damage from a collision. Okay. Need to get you guys out of here. 
Okay. Yeah, I really do think we should use this other base force over here at uh, Wake. I don't know if I'd be able to uh, use torpedoes, but I think just having bombers out here be good news. What's the range from Wake to Midway? 26 hexes, obviously, to Johnston's 35 hexes. Uh, but I think it definitely would help to secure our flank over here. We don't even have to use the entirety of the G4 squadron. We could obviously use just some of them over here. Uh, but I think it's definitely worth our time. So we'd have um, squadron here, squadron here, squadron here, and squadron here. Uh, so if we take a look at that, I mean... Let's see. So I don't know what sort of range it looked like, but it looks something like that. Give or take. I see, like main bases. Is that way? I think that's way. Yeah, um, or oh, that might be way. I don't know. Fucking one of them. But I think it would be worthwhile. It would mean that we'd have a lot of protection here. I see what I'd like to do then is actually base some float planes out this way. Uh, we do need to take a look at having some bombers really in Japan and near Japan. But, um, I. Of course, we do have naval bombers around this region. Also, we'll cover this region with bombers as well. Uh, so really what we want to do is make sure these areas are just simply not open to him. If I can have anything in the area cover our convoys, that's worth a hell of a lot. Like right now, we really don't have anything over this way. So we do need to seriously take a look at what we can do here. Now, I do have these forces on Tinian. Loan cost is 1,125. Hmm. Do I have anything in this convoy that isn't moving anything? Right, so they're all carrying elements. What do I have over here? So, Velo Satani, how you doing, my friend? Okay, so we do have free transports that aren't doing anything right now. That's what I like to see. Right, how about amphibious? Yep, yeah, pull that off. I mean, it's really pathetic in the way of actual troop transport, but this is fine. This is absolutely fine. It's going to take them a long time to do it, but what we're going to do is we're going to have them move over here to Tinian. Uh, we'll have them move to Tinian. Uh, what we'll do then is we'll actually, uh, bit by bit, transfer that Air Force unit either to Saipan, or even take the one for Pagan. Pagan and actually have it moved over here. And I could have it moved over here potentially to Marcus Island. I'd like to have one of them on uh, Chichijima. Though Chichijima has some aviation support already. Yeah, 18. Okay, can I move anything to Chichijima? I love saying that. I could fly my patrol aircraft from here. Let's take a look. Hmm. Right. Restricted location. I can't transfer you either. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh dear. Though, what I can do with this actual squadron out this way... I'll take you. I can actually divide you. Okay. What I'm going to do is actually spread them out. So I'll have a unit moved over here to Aminato. Uh, 
So we have some H6K falls over here. Uh, some over here, some over here. Yeah, just indeed out of water. Okay, I'll keep them here. But yeah, that's good. At least we actually do have a little bit more coverage now, especially over here. I might even want more to the north, but uh, we'll see. Lords over here on training. Both of them are here at cow. Ah, different aircraft. Hmm. Iujima. That reminds me of about our MP game of House High Fall, where they had US player heavily fortified Iujima, while UK player screamed Germany's preparing invasion. <laughs> That's quite funny. So we're looking at 12 hexes. 13 hexes here. I find it so irritating when they're different uh, models of aircraft. <laughs> they're Germany invaded. <laughs> I like it. And they do have impressive range. Okay. Right. You're at least whole. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually gonna transfer you to Chichijima. Hmm. Whose jurisdiction does that come under? I want some flip planes out here at Chichijima. Um Four fleet. Right, I'll have you transferred to four fleet command then. Okay, they might not actually um, have the range. No, that's bullshit. You should be able to transfer to Chichijima. We've been an ass. Hmm. Quick question, are you able to produce carriers or at least convert some ships to carriers uh, for later in the campaign? Yep, yeah, we can convert the seaplane carriers. Uh, we are going to be producing additional carriers. Not too many. But we can convert the seaplane carriers to make some additional room. So really, every carry is bloody valuable. Hmm. I do wonder why I can't land here. Must be the wrong command. Pop 
Possibly. Yeah, pretty much. See, I have um, gotten the Reluctant Admiral mod installed in a separate version. Uh, that's really awesome, actually. I'll quickly show you guys. It's pretty cool. I think what I might do in the future is actually find somebody to play a uh, Reluctant Admiral campaign against. Love the loading screens. Yeah, um... That's what I've been thinking about, actually. He's running, like, another campaign in the Reluctant Admiral mod. Oops. A bit louder. Yeah, in the Reluctant Admiral mod, you have far, far more carriers. Uh, battleships obviously do pay for it in terms of um, industry. But for example, over here, it's like uh, it's Kidabutai 1 and Kidabutai 2. Kidabutai 1 consists of Akagi, Kaga, Ryujo. See, so we do have Shiodo over here. But uh, Kidabutai 2 has Shikaku, Zuikaku, Zuiho. Uh, we do have additional uh, Tone class cruisers to come. You can see here we have the Shikaku class. Zuiho class. Yeah, uh, two Shikaku classes. Uh, Shokaku classes there in Kidabutai. Akagi, sort of Kagi, of course. And Akaga. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It looks dapper. Um, now, something to note as well in Reluctant Admiral is the fact that uh, <laughs> that was quite funny. Actually, over here at Guam, we have Hosho and Taiyo. So, two Ascot carriers over this way. Uh, we do have far, far more carriers than normal. So if we take a look over here. So we have Akagi, uh, Kaga, Hiru, Soru, Shikaku, Zuikaku, Ryujo, Zo, Sh well, Shoho, and Zuiho. Obviously they are available far earlier. Uh, Hosho and Taiyo. Um, I don't think we have any additional battleships, but we do gain them. Well, if we go over here to ship availability. If we take a look at carriers, you can see we gain Yunyo, Hiyo, and then we gain a bunch of other carriers. And now these are actually different classes as well. So we have the Shokako Kai uh, class carrier, which is 75 aircraft. I think we have some very large ones. Oh, these might be the largest. Um... Yep, yeah, Shokaku Kai class. Well, there's not many resources. You have to take the Dutch East Indies as soon as absolutely possible. And aside, for example, the Yunyo class, the first its name, actually arrives in 86 days here at the start. Uh, if we go over here as well, you can see that we have Yamato and Musashi, but we also gain uh, Kawachi and Kusuga. Now, of course, these take a while, but uh, Yamato actually arrives in 84 days as well. <laughs> it's freaking awesome, man. Uh, but yeah, you can... Whoop, my mouse is being weird. Come on, mouse. There we go. You can see that we actually have... Uh, now, they're called large cruisers, but they're basically battle cruisers. So you have the Kawachi class battle cruiser. Uh, pretty good top speed. You can see here she has nine 36 centimeter guns. Uh, radar, of course. Torpedoes love these guys. Love me some uh, battle cruisers. Uh, we also do gain additional heavy cruisers as well. There are another two tone classes to arrive. Now the tones are really freaking awesome. Additional light like, cruisers come in. Uh, I believe we do have either a brand new class of destroyer or at least more of them. Yeah, I think we have more of these guys. Basically the AA focused uh, destroyers. Um, let's see. Group reinforcement schedule. We do have different uh, classes of aircraft as well. Now I don't think the A672 K is in the normal game. Is this is a fighter bomber over here. I don't think it is. Rufus to arrive. And we also have the A674. Uh, this, I'm just showing off the uh, Reluctant Admiral mod over here. Yeah, 14 inch guns. I know, right? Freaking awesome. Really cool. Basically, you gain different aircraft sooner than you normally would do. Lots of other good stuff. I mean, this is using the uh, expanded map as well. Um, so, for example, if we take a look over here, like, let's say, at Hankow, you can see the stacking limit is 210,000. 
we'll compare that to the base game. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff. It's like additional uh, industry. Like for example, Shanghai has naval shipyards, uh, repair shipyard. Nagasaki's been expanded massively, so it has 110,000 tons of capacity there for repair. Port Arthur's been expanded as well. Uh, so there's a lot of additional industry. Uh, there's a lot of additional um, units on the front line. Uh, for example, over here, you take a look at what's available. Like a bunch more zeros, a bunch more G4s. Uh, really good stuff, really good stuff. So I think I might look for a future opponent here, and then uh, take a look at actually running a uh, reluctant admiral mod. Uh, modded campaign. Uh, how do you get it? Uh, you can download it. What I was thinking of doing is actually just um, uploading the files with everything already pre-installed, and then you guys don't have to worry about anything. It's like different position. So for example, you can see over here. Uh, now the you well the allies they do gain something called the allied purchasing. Um, Aircraft purchasing. I don't know how that one works, but I know it's definitely there. So you can see that we do have additional submarines. We don't have more submarines as such. I don't know if we have more, but we do have generally better types of submarines. Of course, I'd have to try and compare the numbers. We can see for obviously down here that we have submarines starting here by the Samoa Islands. Uh, another one there, a couple here by Numea. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome to be honest. It's hard to say exactly what's the difference. But this is something I'd like to look at in the future. The Reluctant Admiral seems like a huge handicap to whoever plays as the Allies. The Allies do gain additional changes as well. It's not just the Japanese that have these changes. Let's see. Yeah, it does simulate a much harder Japan. So it is very tough uh, for the Allies at the start. But they do gain additional stuff. Let's see. Uh, ships database. There we go. Allied. Let's see. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. I think they gain a battle cruiser. They gain a, a a good bit of stuff as well. Hard to say exactly what they gain, but they definitely do gain it. Pulse over here. I think they gain the Alaska class battle cruiser. Wherever it is, it's a CB. That's a midway, CVB. There is it. I might have missed it, to be fair. Starts with the A. Alright, where's the Alaska? It's here somewhere. Hmm. I think the British gain um, a much better carrier. Ah, bugger it, I'll find it later. But yeah, that's a great look at the uh, Reluctant Admiral. I mean, that's going to be something I'd like to take a look at in the future. I'll see if I have to find an opponent for that one. You can see that we have additional submarines on here. Um, There's just lots of changes, actually. There we go. Yeah, so if we take a look at an example and the map, like... Did I scroll over it? Oh, right. Bah. Oh, well. Yeah, you can see, for example, that uh, we actually don't have a stacking limit over here because we're not using the same map. And that was the extended map with actual stacking limits. Saw two versions of it. Well, you saw it, so <laughs> that counts. My eyes are terrible. And I do have a document over here that does actually give a indication of what is in there. Uh, Yamamoto has increased uh, influence. Uh, postulated by the mod brings a greater degree of awareness regarding the possibility of protracted wars. Japan sizes the conflict in 1941. And to facilitate the expansion of Kaigan, uh, Yamamoto orders expansion of the existing Nagasaki, Yokohama, uh, Yokosuka yards, uh, plus building a small yard at Shanghai and a much larger yard at Port Arthur. Uh, the cost of these expansions, particularly at Nagasaki, is staggering. So, I'll laugh. How you doing, my man? Uh, having already stood and prepared for the Circle 4 program, implementations begin. Uh, so, two Shokaku classes, uh, Ryu Kaku and Taikoku, Takaku. Uh, two B64 class command cruisers, Kawachi and Kasuga. I mean, it's interesting about classes command cruisers, but obviously they're like, they're like bow cruisers. Awesome. Uh, two tone classes, six Yahagi class, uh, like, cruisers, 14 uh, Gumo. Yeah, there's obviously stuff for the allies. But we'll take a look at that in the future, anyway. 
That's something to take a look at. And do we have air cover running over the transport? It's going to Fiji whenever. Yeah, we do. We have the A6720 and some of the carriers, and I've also detached a squadron uh, from over here to cut a blue to actually run that additional air support. I'm bringing the carriers home. The AV is going to head over here to Marie. We're going to bomb over here as well. These guys are heading home. Okay. Seems I'm missing... Am I missing supporter garrison here? Or supply? Supply, definitely. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd like you to supply the space. Don't need to put it up by much. Uh, so the Royal Thai Army divisions are moving south. A 55th division. Ah, so I could recombine you actually into the 7th Royal uh, Thai Army Division. Ah, oh, right, we actually split them up, didn't we? Uh, please also hit those heavy cruisers with subs next turn. And uh, they've actually headed down south out of our range, so I can't catch them up. We'll try to, but we're not going to try too particularly hard. That's really how we're going to go with that one. Uh, we are moving Kitabutai south anyway, uh, so what we need to do is really just keep an eye on what's going on there with our reconnaissance. Um, so the issue is I lack aviation support here. So it's not really worth my time sending anything else additionally. <sighs> Let's take a look over here at Tarawa. So you're in reconnaissance over Canton Island. Seems we're not detecting anything. Hmm. Okay. I do have three of you over here at Trunk. Transfer you to Talawa. There we go. Actually, what do we have here? F1M2 Pete's. Right, Jenks over here. Bunch of naval bombers. Hmm. Yeah, we've got, um, we're going to fly some supply into Tarawa. Yeah. These guys are flying supply to Tarawa as I speak. Uh, they don't carry a huge amount, but they are carrying some. If we take a look at what we have here. Uh, I do have some supply over here from this transport, which is unloading, as well as the naval guard. Uh, so yeah, uh, at least we do have some additional supply that is going to be arriving here. I'm going to send another transport down here as well to bring additional. But yeah, we'll have a drip feed of supply. Which we could do. We'll pick up the uh, engineers over here, and then bring them down to Tarawa. Just need engineers. I'm going to try and use the AMC to actually pick up some engineers over here as well and have them brought down to Tarawa. Probably pick up some supply as well over there. Bring the supply back from these uh, transports to Tarawa as well. Now, I'm considering actually sending some additional jakes over here, but I think that would actually make things worse. Yeah, situation's not great. I might actually move the Jakes back. Yeah, I'm going to actually have them move back over here to KYJ. Uh, the reason being it actually helps alleviate 
the aviation su well, support over here. Issues. Um, so we're up to 29. We do have a tender on its way. It's going to be about two days. Yeah, two days until it really arrives. Do you think it'd be worth it uh, to move the G3s or G4s at Tanawa? Uh, we've moved a additional squadron over here to KYJ. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, as soon as I can get an actual squadron based here, obviously I do need the airfield, so this is why we need our engineers. Uh, but once we can do that, then I will definitely base a squadron down here. I mean, what we need to do is uh, consolidate our control over these areas by basing naval bombers out this way. Because even if it doesn't inflict terrible grievous damage on them, it means that we can do it over the course of a few turns, and it's much easier for us to replace a plane than it is for him to replace a ship. Uh, what we're going to be doing as well is taking control of Baker Island in the next coming days, as well as Canton Island, uh, which means that we'll gain uh, air bases closer and closer to the area. Like, it's well out of range over here, but it is within range of Savai. So if I take control of Canton Island, I actually do gain control over here. Uh, it does put us just, just barely outside the range of Palmyra. Barely. But I would be able to control everything coming out from here of the Lion Island. I mean, we have Coffee Island over here. Yeah, Tahiti would be nice to grab in the far, far future just on a raid, really. Trying to deny him another base. Basically, get in, get out. But we'll see. We are going to try and uh, hit his light cruisers over here again. We'll see if we're lucky. I can't afford to run at full speed because I don't want to lose that fuel. Uh, the ocean is, of course, deep here, so we do have that advantage. I think what we'll do then is we'll run here on absolute threat tolerance. Basically, I want you to attack. If you actually do hit the enemy, then that's well worth it. Hmm. Indeed. I think when it comes to down to it, we don't have a huge amount of changes to actually make this time, due to the fact that things did go fairly well. And we consolidated over here, so I think what we'll do then is, uh, yeah, we are marching on Georgetown. So we are going to arrive there in Georgetown next turn, which is great news. Uh, we're going to hit Singapore with far more bombers than he's actually seen before, or really ever, in terms of land-based aircraft, uh, well, land-based bombers. I do have another squadron of Ki-21s over there in Indochina, uh, that I'd love to move over here, but we do need additional aviation support, which is on its way, it's on its way. Okay, just keep it up there. Alright, you're fine. Um, well, I do need to supply you, but I know I don't need to move loads in. Okay, Singora. Yeah. Patani obviously needs supply. Not huge degrees, though. Let's move a thousand there. Don't need a lot here either. To be fair, I don't need to supply it if we aren't going to be using it. Okay, I was talking a long time ago about actually moving my... Bloody... Paratroopers, so we will do. Yeah, as soon as these guys are unpacked, we can actually reform the 56, which is going to be great. Okay. Amphibious. I clicked on ASW. Okay. Actually, what do we need to move the uh, paratroopers? There they are. Uh, 732, so not a lot. And these guys are great. Really going to make use of them. Take a ship out there as well. 
mine layers. Hmm. What I'm going to do then is actually grab one of them. I do have a mine layer over here. Okay, so I want you to head over here to Hong Kong, start mining Hong Kong. I'm going to take one of these mine layers from Pescadores. Um, yeah, I don't have one over here to Takao, so I definitely need one. Good up on these mine layers then. Mm, you. Right, have you head over here to Pescadores? Not to Takao, uh, to Cow, sorry. Okay, I do have some transports over here. Fantastic. Amphibious. I don't need much in the way of capacity. So just three ships will do fine. And it's obviously overkill, but it's required. Uh, so we'll have you head over here to uh, Kagi. Pick up those uh, paratroopers. Okay. Sydney Maru. 800. I'll give it a little bit extra just to make sure. Okay, uh, don't fucking load fuel. Load troops. Mm, not gonna carry 10,000 tons of supply. Okay. Yokosuka first SNLF. Load. Benefy. Actually go back. Yep. Accept load. There we go. And so we're loading up now elements of the Yokosuka. First SNLF. We'll also load up the uh, third SNLF soon. I have a first raiding regiment over here. Larger unit. Need to have it moved out. I do have an APD here. Of course would be the Okakazi. Yeah, um... Got it in low... Priority. I don't think it makes a massive difference. Nah. I'll have you set to critical just in case. So 13 days would actually have APDs to move them, but probably not worthwhile. Yeah, well, then again, it is and it isn't. I think what we will do with the first raiding regiment is I'll actually have them moved out into the Pacific. I think they'd be fantastic for grabbing ungarrisoned islands or really uh, sparsely held islands and it would be really remarkably handy in just changing up the theatre because I don't think he's going to have any airborne troops out here in the Pacific so if we actually do have that capability out there in the South Pacific and he's going to shake things up of course I could use them in the Dutch East Indies but I think they're a very they're a very interesting unit to use aren't they very interesting so what are your plans for this super heavy class oil burner Yamato battleship space battleship oil burner firelighter? Uh, that is now 10 days since commissioning. <laughs> uh, to be fair, what we are going to use it for, it's going to be a difficult task really of how to use it. <sighs> hmm... We've actually restarted the construction of the Yamato. She's been building for the last couple of turns. Didn't seem to make much of a difference. And it, yeah. I think what we'll do then, when it comes to Yamato... Well, see, I'd love to have it head out with the carriers, but she's slower. She's still fast, but a bit slower. Um, see, how I envision things, well, envision things to come. Is. Okay, so. Assuming our operations go successfully down here, what I want to do is basically. This is kind of what I want to actually establish in the end. Uh, so I'm going to call this the 19. We're going to call this the 42 line. We'll call this the J42 line. This is what we want, really. This is going to be the limit, really, towards our expansion to a degree. 
Um, we need to bear this in mind, we really can't get too crazy. Uh, so basically how we're going to run this is it's like... Uh, I suppose the best comparison is that of the late Roman Empire. Uh, we're no longer going to be proactively defending in 4243, as uh, so we're not going to be massive forces on the border and then heading out on uh, preemptive attacks, but rather we are going to be using the Fodorati system. So basically, well, the, the Fodorati system, the uh, reserve system, the defense and depth system. Uh, so what I'd like to do then is have the J43 line. Now, what this will basically consist of is, let's say, Saigon, Babal Duarte, Truck, KYJ, uh, probably eventually Wake. Uh, but basically, what we want to do is actually set these bases up. I mean, of course, Singapore would be nice over here, but it is on the front line. Uh, basically, what we want to do is actually use these bases over here to actually house the carriers, the uh, battleships. Uh, so, really, how to envision this is... Okay, so let's say there's a allied force moving through the area, moving into the J-42 line. Uh, what we'll do then is really use our aircraft against this. Aircraft and small raiding forces. Uh, what we'll do then is obviously over the course of a couple of days is gather information as much as we can, uh, gather our forces and then head out to meet the task force itself. The reason I always want them on the interior lines is so we always have time to build our information up, time to build up the knowledge of what we're facing, as well as actually time to gather our forces. Like, for example, additional forces could be moved over here that are best suited to the task. Um, so when it comes down to it with Yamato and other ships of that nature, is they are going to be based in the second line more than anything. I think that's going to be the way we run this. We are going to... I mean, the, the Imperial Japanese Navy is a formidable tool. They are our sword and our shield. But... Should we have a successful 42 into a successful 43? And we secure the objectives that we need to. It's not going to be the uh, Imperial Navy that is going to be the sword and shield. Well, in fact, the, the Navy will be the uh, sword... And the Air Force will be the shield. The Army obviously will be doing the Army things. Uh, but yeah, that's how we're going to basically run things. A defense and depth system. That's going to be the idea. Singapore is farther from danger than it looks. The Sumatra blocking most of the approaches. Yeah, true. I mean, Singapore does have a very special place. It is fantastic there. It is, as you say, guarded. I mean, Sumatra blocks it off. It's actually in a fantastic choke point. Uh, I'd consider it. It depends really on the situation. I mean, I, was, I suppose it would have, obviously, a lot of uh, ground forces there to cover it as well. But yeah, that's going to be the general idea. Okay. So we'll have our forces loaded up. Right, loading the Yokosuka. We'll begin loading the raiding regiment. Do I not have anything here? I don't think I do. We'll have something dispatched from uh, Nagasaki. Hmm. I'll use the Hashimis. Let's grab another one just in case. There we go. What about Indian Ceylon? Well... We have to be realistic, really. It, that is very much going to depend on the progress of the army. More than anything. Okay, transfer some uh, patrol boats. Oosh, they have short ass range. Speaking of short ass range. Hmm, might as well move the sub chasers in here, to be honest. So we'll have you head out with two sub chasers there. They can obviously take fuel from the transports. Pick up a unit. Kagoshima. This is Kagoshima I want to pick up from, I believe.
Hopefully the uh, Jake Force reline does not get midway. <laughs> Well, this is it. Midway is an interesting one. I would like to base something there, but it's not essential right now. And there we go. First Raiding Regiment. There we go. So they're going to head over there to Kagoshima to pick up the first Raiding Regiment. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll have them move down here to the Pacific, I'd say. I think it'd be fantastic. Like, for example, if we were able to use our patrol aircraft, our H6K4s in sufficient numbers, uh, the uh, transport variants would be fantastic at it as well. Uh, but we could actually capture islands like this significantly easier. Hmm. Yeah, it's really why I wanted to base bombers out here at Wake as well. Is uh, So we actually do guard... I mean, we will have far more bombers to come in time. I suppose he would treat Midway cautiously. I think he's not going to worry about it too much. Now, I do have my one AMC over here, so what I'm going to do is actually start to load up. Um, so we could actually... We do have another AMC on its way, so we are going to be picking up the... Uh, well, then again, let's see. You don't combine into any larger unit. You do combine into the second division. And though you are very, very spread out, but the vast majority of the division is actually in the east. Though you do have artillery here, only 26 guns. I doubt he's going to be coming back here. And I'm not going to waste the time of the infantry regiment out here. I mean, especially because this infantry regiment could be used elsewhere. So we are going to begin to load up the 24th infantry regiment. Amphibious. Right, load. Don't take any supply. Begin to load. So I can only take, what was that, 56% of the unit or something like that? And uh, that's fine. Uh, we do have another AMC a couple days out. Yeah, it's over here. It is a couple days out. But it means that we could actually begin to load up the other half, or at least the other third of the regiment there. Which is very handy because we can actually use them to help secure the positions down here. Or we could actually have them move um, out here into the uh, Asian sphere to actually rebuild the division. Hell, he may even avoid midway outright, except for occasional sub -trolls. Yeah, pretty much. I could do with an aviation engineering unit over here, so I could actually base some aircraft. I think having some uh, bombers would be nice. And the thing is, what what is the range here to Pearl Harbor? It's 30 hexes. So it's not out of his means. He could build up his air bases over here. For example, he does actually have an air base over here, so it's 27 hexes out. Uh, he could base them... Wow, French frigate taking up all the room. Thick French frigate. <laughs> I swear to God, that's the only island. Huh. Interesting. Any interesting. You guys moving down south? That's what I do like to see. We're overloaded here, but that's fine. Actually, I think what we'll do is we'll have these guys operate out at night. But again, it's not good. It's going to be bloody hard for them, isn't it? So no, don't bother. Just operate in the day. I really do need additional engineers down here. So many of them are out of operation here at the moment. Some for only a few days, some for much, much longer. Yeah. We are really, really pushing here. Now, I can still keep running here with a few of them, but we need to be careful. Once we do actually build up the airfield here, and actually build up our engineers, it'd be much better. But right now, it's a delicate situation. In fairness, what I might do here... 
I do have supply bolts from these ships, actually. I'm going to take some of them. U4, K, you can begin to unload here. Dock and unload. There we go. Yeah, but I need to go out and pick up those engineers. Yeah, we have been pushing the pilots hard. I need about a thousand. That'll do. I think this is actually for the best. Hmm. Well, currently, we do have forces inbound over here. We have forces bound over here to pick them up. Yeah, the AMC. Okay, I suppose that's not too bad then. They'll arrive over here. Okay. And um, that's not too bad. We don't need to do it as of yet. The forces over here just need to rest. And I do have... Only four engineers over here. Not many. Also, hopefully the J-43 does not get uh, battled of the Philippine Sea and met with the wrath for some reason. Excess carries. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Oh dear. See, we have run our patrol boats pretty hard out here. Well, our flying boats out here pretty hard. Uh, but we will be able to repair them, especially once we do build up the airfield, especially once we do build up the amount of aviation support. It's going to be definitely easier. Uh, turn around will be much faster. Uh, but we still have planes in the air, so we will continue to run them. Though I will probably have a squadron or two uh, rest. Okay. Yeah, the Yokohama... And THE would be hard pressed to get carriers undetected on the way to the Philippines. <laughs> Alright. Hmm. Okay, you're gonna continue here. I am gonna turn down the amount here, put 60% on the actual squadron. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is actually have these guys stand down. Well, naval search, but I want you all to rest. And I want you guys to rest here. So I'm going to stand down to the three squadrons. Uh, the reason being to give the other squadrons time to actually repair and uh, reduce the fatigue there, ideally. Actually, up that back up to uh, 80%. I think it is definitely necessary. Yeah, to a degree it is. I do need to be able to base. If I could base some of them over here, it'd be fantastic. So I do need to build, need to move something out here. I think what we'll do is actually have the, these two engineering units moved over here. <laughs> Probably their benefit there. Uh, but indeed, I think we'll have these two engineering units move to Talawa. So then what I could potentially do is actually have one of these uh, engineering units uh, transported via the air to Funafuti. Which would actually actually give me like a uh, pretty good presence over here. I can actually start to build this up to a degree. Hmm. Much to be done. Much to be done. Okay, Kidabuta is moving out over here. Continue out this way. <laughs> Right. Modern day Yamamoto. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think after the stream, I might spend some time actually playing the Reluctant Admiral campaign. Just go through that. That could be fun. Hmm. I really do want to see how it works. Ooh, let's take a look at this. I know it's taking some time here, but we are more or less done with the turn here, mostly. 
Um, other changes. In the second half of 1940, expanded tactical mission is sent to Germany to learn of German experience regarding modern naval air uh, warfare. Among other things, obtains blueprints with large caliber automatic cannons, both Rhein Metal 47mm and both wars. Uh, passive hydro acoustic, acoustic uh, devices and ground AAA. A. <laughs> um, hmm. Interesting. Right, with a firm vision of the uh, ships being constructed through the Circle 4, Yamamoto works to completely reorganize the Kaigen and create some modified version of the Kido Butai. And the struggle between concentration and dispersal of carriers plays out, and the Japanese decide to embrace a new carrier division of two CVs and one CVL, as they did in June of 1942, escorted by at least two fast heavy cruisers or battle cruisers, a CL and 68 DDs. Uh, for shadowing US uh, task groups, Kido Butai consists of three carrier divisions that operate independently or separately. As new CVs come online, the Japanese attempt to maintain this 2CVL, 1CVL, 2CV, uh, 1CVL setup. Hiyo, Junyo, well, Junyo Nissen. Interesting. A really interesting read here, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, some rains. Fuel requirements are reduced across the board. As far as I can see, the fuel loads in the game roughly correspond to maximum load in terms of liquid fuel in IRL. Uh, wow. Hmm. Interesting. Something to take a look at in the future. And there really needs to be a Get a Grisby's World on Earth game. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that'd be amazing. Okay. So I think we have most things here. Hmm. So they're on their way. Question is, is it worthwhile to hit the Shortlands base at Buin? There's no airfield here, but it could obviously base uh, float planes. Hmm. It's well out of range of Talawa, but Catalinas do have ridiculously good range. Surprisingly, these bases are worth quite a lot. I mean, this one here, 50. Huh, interesting. Luganville's worth 50, there's another 50 points here. Thirty-two. Yeah, it's actually rather interesting. So we'd actually be able to gather in this one area 130 victory points. Uh, what did we come up with? So about 600 here at Fiji. Savai. So Pago Pago worth 100. So we actually do gain a lot of victory points in this area, which is going to be very important for us. And we are trying to go up for a victory point win, really, for the most part. So we do really need to... Uh, Escalate the score. What's up, Bancola? How goes the planning today? Uh, pretty well. Pretty well. We're mostly done here for the most part. Hmm. We're going to head out and refuel Kitabutai. Right here. Yeah, there we go. Bunch of destroyers on the way here. Okay, that's what I like to see. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually take two of them. Uh, new task force. Mm. Grab these two. Okay. I want you to head over here to Saipan. The good news is Iro will be able to be escorted by these destroyers. Okay, yep, that's awesome, that's what we need. Well, these guys are heading to Saipan. I'll take these guys here. Have you meet the replenishment task force? There we go, meet task force 350. Hmm. 
<laughs> so you're currently on your way to Saipan. We're going to cancel that. Riders patrol here for the time being. Okay. Yeah. Not much can be done with you, but we'll stand you down anyway so we can break anything up. Uh, speaking of that, I wonder how the game works in breaking the purple code. Uh, the Americans definitely do have magic intercepts. Like, they do have really good knowledge of what we're doing. Uh, like, for example, he won't have perfect information. But like, for example, like I get information here, he'll have far more information, he'll be able to see, like, even units, where they're heading, stuff like that. Okay. So I'm currently expanding the port and airfield. I'm going to stop expanding the uh, airfield. In reality, I should probably stop expanding the port, but... I'm going to stop expanding the port. Where am I? Hmm. See, I'd rather pull supply from San Fernando, as it's on the rail line, than from Apari. Um, I'll keep building up the airfield, the uh, port. I'll keep building the port there. Yeah, don't go to expect uh, Lucanville anytime soon. <laughs> Couple tankers over here. Do also have Sendai. Okay. I'll have... Actually, to be fair, you should stay here. I definitely need more supply here in Cameron Bay. Yeah, it's on this way. Hmm. Loading a decent amount of fuel here. Okay. We're going to have these uh, freaky issues sent over here to Port Arthur. Yep. Re I mean, they're really bloody good ships. Really good. But their speed is what's important for carrying cargo. And so we can have them sent over here to Port Arthur. And I could even have them potentially sent over here to Tohara, but I think uh, the distance is the most fuel efficient one to be using them on. Okay. I do think by and large we do have practically everything done here. Go over China once more just in case. Right, deliberate attack here. That's what we want. Right. Seems 13th has actually just arrived. Yeah, 20 seconds on its way here. So we'll have this unit unpack. I 
Ah, uh, see, I have some Yokosuka over here. Though, these guys are just SLF. And how they moved out. I'll grab them both, actually. There we go. So I'm going to load up those uh, SLF. Uh, transfer in some forces here to torpedo boat, I guess. Two torpedo boats. Not the best defended thing, but we only need to move them to Japan or somewhere here. Uh, I'm going to probably have them move out into the Pacific, really. That's where they really belong. Shouldn't take as long now. Right, so if we take a look at the ships, we have a lot of our equipment to come. Question is, do we start moving now? We could move right now, but I think we'll wait another day uh, for our equipment to unload. No. 9,000. What we'll do then is actually trying to... I mean, we do have a lot of cruiser mine layers here that are super, super useful. I should just transfer out all of these guys. Hmm. <laughs> See, we are actually going to build a Shinano. Since it's just the actual cargo here. Ah. Oh well, Pokeru's keep it up. And that's a lot of troop transports over there that I'd like to move back to Japan. I move back down here to Shanghai. Okay. Begin moving to Suchao. Closing on on them. Hmm. 
It's going to keep up deliberate attacks. Uh, we'll have additional reinforcements here. I mean, the thing is we're going to have three divisions and artillery. Only a little bit of artillery. Uh, still heavy artillery, which is nice. Would you build the Shinano if you would have a choice to finish as a Yamato class BB? Yeah. Well. I think it's one of those. You might as well just build her as a Yamato. At least then you actually get a ship with a clear sense of purpose. Because the uh, Shinano doesn't have a huge amount of capacity, so it's like, I don't know. It's like capacity is great, but the thing is, it's like you might as well just build it as a bloody battle ship, man. I mean, the biggest guns in the world are hard to argue with. I mean, she would have a lot of AA where she could actually help defend the other carriers, so it's one of these things, isn't it, really? But at the end of the day, she's there to soak up some actual um, damage. So, not a bad thing, I suppose. Hmm. It's one of these things. It's like, would you build a third Yamato at all? Nah, you'd obviously want to use those resources for the carriers, but then this is it, you go with the cards that you're given. Need our forces to escape, yeah. So they have 6th Division and 20th Independent Mixed Brigade moving on up. Uh, they're not far away now, actually. So once they do arrive next turn, we'll be able to start fighting them off over here. Yeah. Forty-two planes. Where? Ah, uh, right. Yes. So I could get away with moving you somewhere. I think I'll have you moved over to that rail, uh, to that base over there, actually. At least then you can actually guard it. There we go. Yeah, at least we'll have some actual air power in this area now. Are you able to selectively build ground units? Uh, not really. Shame, really. Hmm. Okay, I think we are pretty much at the end of the turn here. Right, once you're able to, I do want you to move out. Hmm. I want them to, when they're able, upgrade. Which plane? The one Jake, okay. Whereabouts was that based? Oh, you mean that one. Oh, right, okay. This one over here. Yeah. 
Phew, excuse me. Indeed a biplane. Need them out of here soon. Okay, stop wasting fuel. I could do with you elsewhere, actually. There's a whole shite load of uh, supply here. So load your tender. Do you think a single decisive battle against the USN in 1944 was a clever idea, or just playing stupid if the war is not going best on the Imperial Japanese Navy? Uh, see, the thing is, is like at that stage in the war, it's like the Japanese could have won. I mean, I mean, what is a decisive battle really at that point? You can't force the US to come to peace because at the end of the day, they are geared up to utterly annihilate you. It only buy Japan time, really. They might have been able to go for something. Like a, um, well then again, unconditional surrender was the Allied policy, so in reality, yeah, it's like you could sink, you could sink the US carriers, but the thing is they're going to be more, and you're just going to make the enemy more determined to defeat you. So in reality, the best they could do would just be to hold out for some extra time, uh, by which <laughs> the bloody Soviets would be coming down, and so they were pretty much just screwed at that point. No, we're no longer building float planes. I might base another squadron of um, troll craft over here, actually. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, we'll base them over here. Okay. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> okay, uh, so we actually have um, H6K spread out throughout Japan, which is actually fantastic, so at least we'll actually have some decent coverage there. Okay, sweet. Yep, the base force is not far out now from track. Two days from track, we'll have an additional base force. I we're going to tell them do not unload. Yep, which they aren't. That's good news. What we'll probably do is actually have that other element of the base force potentially loaded onto a faster transport, perhaps. But we'll see. It would be nice, obviously, to get them in the area. Uh, but things are going smoothly. Things are going smoothly. Also, we've taken losses, but that's been a learning curve. So we'll hit Singapore with over 100 bombers next turn. Hit uh, Johabaru. Yeah. We are still unpacking here, but I think we'll be fine. Uh, we have a entire reformed division, so the 16th division is now on its way to Minlila. So good luck to him there. He knows he's going to lose it, which is why he's actually pulled out. Uh, but yeah, they'll make quick work of the forces in Manila. So we'll capture Manila there, deprive him of some victory points. And uh, yeah, it does actually give us some light industry and resources. We can actually start uh, creating supply within the Philippines, which is nice.
<laughs> nice. Never has a man committed more to a meme than swordfish. Okay. So we have a 22nd division down here marching towards Wenchal. I'm going to use these guys over here, actually. Uh, do they have range... ...too far? Okay, run reconnaissance over here. So it might be... We even have one of these paratrooper regiments, well, paratrooper forces moved over here to, like, Pescadores or even, uh, even, like, Canton or something like that. We can actually use the transport planes to actually reach Kanshien, uh, which would be quite nice because it would actually help to inhibit his supply moving over here. That'd be very good. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we have, uh... It's been a mixed campaign, but then again, it's been my first play by email campaign. And so, um, it's a very different challenge from play, playing against the AI. Very different. But I think we're going fairly well. I think we are making advances as we need to. And for all the losses that we suffered, it's not too bad. I know THG has been blowing his trumpet, but in reality, we've gained some good objectives. And we do have him by the bollocks over here in, uh, in the South Pacific. He will not want to actually admit that, but uh, Kitabutai is coming. We will secure the area. The thing is, he's going to expect us to get caught up in the quagmire that will be the Fiji operation. So she's actually taking the island of Fiji. Uh, but there's no need. There's no need to actually take the island uh, in any rush. We can take the islands around it and secure the area nonetheless. Uh, at which point Kitabutai will then begin her, well, movements towards Asia once more. Ideally, what I want to actually do is combine the entirety of our carrier force. That would be, like, obviously the uh, six fleet carriers, the two light carriers, the two escort carriers into a single force or two forces, potentially. Yeah, I could probably do, like, two forces. Like, have three fleet carriers, one CVL, and then obviously a escort carrier as well with them. Obviously making for five flat tops in total. <laughs> yeah, you mean the Fiji distraction. I mean, this is going to be very, uh, very interesting. I mean, I'd love to know what he is sending down here. I mean, we have an idea of what's been sent out to this area, and that's actually a fair amount of force. Uh, but the thing is, it does make me wonder, is he drawing units from elsewhere to do this? Because he's got to be drawing them from somewhere. But I. It's going to be a very interesting time. Kidabutai is only a few days away to the north. I think I might have them head further south. Mm. No, I want to stick with the transports. Yeah, not be long now. Uh, when we dock Kidabutai for repair and maintenance, I think what we'll probably do is have the uh, worst affected carrier actually sent probably to Hong Kong. Repair shipyard about 50,000 tons. Or it could have had it sent to... Yeah, or it could be sent to Nagasaki. It depends really which one's close at the time. I think we'll do it one carrier at a time, so we still have at least three... Uh, well, sorry, uh, at least uh, five fleet carriers ready, really. Hmm. <laughs> I know, right? Pipelines are dangerous. Okay, so I think with that, we are more or less done. Does anybody have any suggestions here? Uh, the great complicated Imperial Japanese plan <laughs> to affect the USN. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, does anybody have any suggestions here? So I think for the most part, we're done. I think afterwards I'm going to probably have a go at uh, some uh, reluctant Admiral, I think. Or even some Battlefleet Gothic too, something like that. Hmm. Something of that nature. I still think some separate carry fleets would be better than one big one. Perhaps, perhaps. I think what we'll do is we'll uh, consider splitting them into smaller ones once we have them all combined. I think I could get away with like, three 
fleet carriers want light carrier and an escort carrier. It, it really does depend. I think we'll always want to use them nearby each other. Uh, take Sanawak and Borneo. Well, we've got troops over here. It would have been done two days ago, but I did make a mistake with the actual orders, uh, but it's underway now. The way to look at things is... Um, I know people will be saying that, like, okay, you've been far too slow when it comes to actual fuel. The thing is, uh, we are going to be taking these installations with a mixed level of uh, damage anyway to represent the Dutch resistance there. Well, I don't know about in uh, Brunei and Miri. Probably the British. Maybe some resistance anyway. Um, but it's one of these things. I'm not re going to regret the speed at which we moved. Yeah, 3 CV, 3 CV, CVL plus CVE, CVL plus CVE. Yeah, something of that nature. Yeah, coordination decreases when you have three, more than three or four carriers. Interesting. I wouldn't say it's critical. It's definitely helpful, but the thing is we can defeat China without the Burma Road. In reality, he's, um... He's not doing anything more than delay me in China. Victory there is inevitable, really. Especially now as... Uh, it's a good thing, actually, I'm going to double-check this. Alright, okay, these forces are here. Third tank regiment. Movement. Ah, fantastic. Yeah, good thing I didn't miss this. Okay, yep, so we have our death stack over here. So we have here the 25th Division, the 14th, 24th, 12th, 29th, 37th Divisions. Of our artillery and support in vehicles. So, yeah, uh, we are going to begin marching now down here to the south. Uh, so what we're going to do, I'd imagine that uh, DHG was kind of counting on me to cross this river and uh, thus uh, trigger a shock attack. But uh, no, we're actually going to march like this and cut him off from the rear. Yeah, but it, <laughs> it's one of these things, it's like, uh, it's okay saying like, right, yes, you must do this, you must do this, you must do this. Uh, you need to do this as quickly as possible. There's only there's only a certain speed at which things can be done anyway. We do have an RTA division moving, on, well, a small RTA force on its way over here to Burma. Uh, we will look at moving for forces there in the future. Once we take Singapore, we'll have more forces available. We have another division that will be sent from Formosa soon. Um, yeah, the formations have been assembled. And they'll begin to march now. <laughs> mm hmm. Alright, you're on strategic, actually. Need you on movement. That's fine, you can move anyway. Right, just set everybody to combat for the moment. Oh, yeah, but the thing is, it doesn't particularly matter there, because once we're in actual good terrain. It's, it's not going to help him. Uh, we have more artillery than he does. So for example, like, clear terrain, clear terrain, clear terrain here. He has 158,000 troops, sure. Uh, but the thing is, what we'll do is obviously then gather our bombers. <laughs> Indeed. Right, so we'll have them begin to march. We'll have, I don't know, let's say... The 25th Division lead. Is that all to follow? It's only 4 to 6 kilometers. The best thing is it's not going to take as long actually to make that. Uh, we are going to be marching on Chengchao the next week. We'll take Xinyang where we'll have another four divisions assembled. I think what we're going to do then with these four divisions is we might potentially march up to Nanyang potentially. It depends really. Huh. Though actually I would really need these divisions down here in Changsha. Depends really. Issue is we lack roads. Well there's no roads here. Well, yeah, potentially so. We'd have to be very sure of a shock attack working though. See, I'm holding this position here, it really doesn't make that much of a difference to me. Like, I have these engineers I need to move, actually. Have you moved to Kaifeng? <laughs> it's 
So what I'm going to do here is actually build up fortifications. Can I not? Hmm, seems there's no actual base here. Yeah, there's no base here. It doesn't look like I can build one either. Right, I can build one over here at Anyang. I'm going to build up a um, fortified position here at Anyang. Same over here, actually. Need to fortify these positions. Okay. True, true. But we do have um, over 3,000 assault value here. <laughs> One sword swinging boy. <laughs> I like it. So I need a hundred in the way of... Uh, forces to remain behind. I'll keep the um, engineers here. Okay, they can stay behind. I'll have the temporary division stay behind. Yeah, but this is a great concentration of armor. I mean, that's the thing as well, he doesn't have... Uh, he has no armored fighting vehicles, while we have over a thousand. So... <laughs> That'll be fun. That'll be fun. I'm glad I didn't miss that, actually, because that would have been uh, a waste of time. It's going to be a bloody battle, but it's going to be bloodier for the uh, Chinese. Definitely. And we'll begin to employ our air power as well. That should be quite nice. Hmm... I'm going to have these bad boys run combat air patrol over a low star, actually. Yeah. A lot of assault volume. Okay. So I can handle additional aircraft here. What I'm going to do then is transfer over the 14th Sentai. These guys aren't on the rail line. So we, we need to avoid rail lines. For them. Well, we need to avoid bases off the rail lines. Alright. I don't know if they'll be operational next turn. Hmm. Hello there, Dose. How you doing, my man? Hmm. I'll have them run escort over. Jahabru. I'll have a 14th Sentai made ready as well for airfield attack if they can. Run them at the same altitude. And of course if they can run or not. Would be nice to have additional bombers hit here. And of course I could use them on the raid on Singapore but I don't want to have anything uh, uncoordinated reach Singapore. I want it covered by zeros. Uh, so we're flying here, currently 12,000 feet. 12,000 feet, yeah, that's good. There we go. Yeah, so we'll have uh, 15A6720s. We'll have some KI-431As to aid them. I'm going to see a lot of air activity here. Hell of a lot. 
What do I have here at Singora then? Um. Hmm. That's just some good pilots. I'm gonna have them transferred. Or do I? I'll take the smaller squadron actually. Yeah, I'll take the small squadron and have them transferred over here to Singora. Uh, I'm going to actually have them run Combat Air Patrol just over Singora. Just, it's just really to make sure we have some... Well, or do we? No, no, I'm going to go in now. Keep them training. It's probably for the best. The care to are not really very good. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, so, got that underway. Maya will be ready soon. Our Congo will be ready to move eventually. Moving a little bit further to the south here to actually have our planes uh, better able to look after our transports. Yeah, um, I think we're going to be able to hit him pretty hard. We're going to be running reconnaissance over these two bases over here as well. Oh, it's going to be an interesting turn. Okay, so there's always going to be something in the region about six hectares away from uh, Kiributai, which is really good, actually. Probably have them close in uh, ranks soon enough. Indeed. Yeah, I think we'll be good with that. I think that is probably the turn uh, sorted there. Now, you should be ready to move next turn. Supposedly, we only need a day. So what I'll do then is I'll have you fly for that day, if possible. And I think it'd be worthwhile to actually just pick up any information in the area. I mean, uh, would be ideal. We do have some information here on Pico Uh We are going to be running uh, search planes over Suva. Try and pick up this uh, light cruiser here. Okay. And this is part two. We're actually just about to end the turn here. And then we'll be uh, looking at turn 20, ideally soon, probably in the next two days. Hmm. Yep, we have our guys over here. I think what we might look at doing in the future is actually what's our... Um, Submarines return over here to Kotobaru. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to actually have some of them uh, take their torpedoes out and actually have them armed with mines. And we could actually start to, like, mine Batavia. Well, not Batavia. I think Batavia would have mines. Uh, but probably, like, bases like Osthaven or other bases like that. Uh, ones that we don't intend to use, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually make it difficult for him. Hmm. But I'm glad that we will be moving our troops now. That's pretty good news. The level of moonlight seems to be increasing as well. So that is going to see night attacks actually um, increasing in probably in likelihood. Indeed. Take uh, Late Island near the Tonga Islands just so you can send. Uh... <laughs> just in time. I like it. <laughs> okay, yep. Uh, I think we're good to go here. So I can't think of anything else to do. Moved a squadron G4s. Um, what do I have here in G uh, air capacity? 48. 43, yeah, I don't have much more. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to go for. Rearm level is fantastic here. Uh, obviously, once we build up to the next level of port, we'll actually be able to rearm any ship, which is going to be great. I think ultimately what we'll do is we'll have Kidibutai... Obviously, aid in the capture of the uh, South Pacific here. Then we'll have them return to truck. Uh, they'll refuel the truck. I could actually have them undergo some light repairs, potentially. Depending on really what's available. Uh, larger port. And we also do have the auxiliary repair dock, which could be quite good, actually, repairing some of the damage. And we'll see what happens, really. 
But yeah, I think we are good to go there, so I'd like to thank you guys so very, very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed this plan, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. It will just make a big difference. Or PayPal, or Super Chats. All of them are great. And if you're not already part of a, uh, well, a member of a Discord, then do go ahead and join. It's really worthwhile. Uh, but I do let me know what you guys think about the Reluctant Admiral. And, uh, yeah, I'll have a think in the future if I do have the time to do another play-by email alongside this one. Uh, the channel really has become <laughs> pretty much dedicated to the War in the Pacific. Uh, I suppose I do need to mix my content up to a degree. Uh, but until next time, guys, thank you so very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Until next time, goodbye for now. See you in the next stream.